Hello everybody, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time I am back with another solo playthrough of Forbidden Lands, where I will be continuing where I left off from my previous episode. So if you have not seen, I've done two previous episodes for this kind of playthrough series of Forbidden Lands. I'll have them both linked in the description. Uh, the first one was me actually doing a bit of a playthrough and starting my adventure. Nothing too crazy happened, it was more just getting a feel for the characters, the area, kind of exploring the area around the starting village that my characters start in. Uh, but then, I think it was last week, uh, or somewhat recently, the previous episode before this, I did a kind of half episode where I went back and fleshed out the backstories for my two characters I am playing, Gnolf and Ulrich. Um, well, Gnolf is kind of my main character that I'm playing. Ulrich was my companion that I made into uh, an actual like player character with talents and, and all that good stuff. Uh, so I'll have those both linked in the description if you want to you know, get caught up to see what's going on. But today that's where I'm picking back up is we left off in Wind End after our little journey around to, down to Bloodguard, running into the escaped slave. There was the goblin with the, the burial mound that wanted us to like, dig it up for treasure and all that good stuff. Um, so what I want the goal of today to be is I want to finally set up a stronghold. I really want to set up a stronghold. The stronghold mechanics are one of the things that stood out to me in Forbidden Lands, and I still have yet to really dive too deep into them. So my goal for today, and we'll see how this goes, you'll know in the future because you'll be able to like look at the timestamps below, is to hopefully play out a couple of days. We're starting on Spring Rise 39. Um, Ideally, we're going to spend that all just in Wind End for getting info on any nearby castles and just stocking up on supplies. Then hopefully the next day, Spring 40, uh, Spring Rise 40, technically, uh, we will start journeying out and to hopefully find a castle. The goal is to find a castle somewhere here in Ariana Forest. Uh, the two characters want to do that. Gnolf would like to... Well, they're teaming up, right? They're a bit of adventurers. Uh, they both got stuff going on, but right now they both, they were from Windguard, so they really care about Windguard and want to help protect it. Right now, Wind, or not Windguard, Wind End, I'm looking at both town names, Wind End, they want to protect it. Uh, Wind End has, has kind of been getting a lot of trouble recently, gotten, getting a lot of people messing with it recently, where they had... A previous past with the Foolish Bandits that uh, was more of a past rivalry that happened like five-ish years ago. It's been kind of an ongoing thing, um, but that has recently restarted again. Uh, Ulrich especially is not, is not a fan of the Foolish Bandits, and um, yeah, he, he, Ulrich is also especially protective of Wind End. So he wants to ideally hang around the area of Wind End to help protect it. Gnolf is more of a hunter character, still cares about Wind End, not as much as Ulrich, but wants to do more hunting, wants to practice their archery, but also wants to help protect Wind End. So I think the kind of common solution is they need to find a base somewhere in the woods that they'll still be near Wind End to help protect it when they need, but then they have a place that's safe, separate from Wind End, where they're not gonna have foolish bandits messing with them, trying to set stuff on fire or push down trees. You're not gonna have the Cult of the Closed Eye, I think is the name of this, Cult of the Shut Eye, is this group of like adventurers that came into Wind End and kidnapped Gnolf and Ulrich at one point. That was pretty recent. I think I put it in the bio that that was like uh, two weeks ago that they, were kidnapped and then it was some point after that they escaped so it's probably it's within the last two weeks that they got were kidnapped and they escaped so yeah it's kind of uh it's kind of hectic out there for these two but the plan is spring 39 get info and wind end about maybe a nearby castle and hopefully hopefully there is one if not we'll just have to wander and hope to find one spring 40 and 41 will, will be spent probably journeying around trying to find the castle and then spring 42 ideally we have found a castle we'll spend the day clearing out any impossible monsters or creatures in it hopefully and then i think in the book it says it, it's up to the game master but it usually takes a quarter day or two to actually like cl physically clean out the stronghold to make it you know usable and clean clean out the dirt tidy it up stuff like that uh so hopefully ideally you know you'll you'll know before i do 
we'll get all that done today. Uh, I tend to sometimes drag on a little bit, get a little caught in the weeds. I think if I come in today with a game plan, that'll hopefully help me stay a bit more focused and get a bit more done. So with that rambling out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so Spring Rise 39, um, I should know, uh, I didn't realize this before and I wasn't really tracking it this way, but how at least the Game Master Guide handles months is uh, they have their own little calendar. I guess you can't really see it there. Own little calendar right there that has essentially the different seasons split up into two phases. So you have Spring Rise and Spring Wane. You have Summer Rise, Summer Wane, stuff like that. So each season split up into two phases. And how I was doing it before is each season was 90 days, so you have a year of 360. So what I'll do is each phase just cut in half, 45 days. So we're almost at the end of Spring Rise, actually. Um, but let's not get sidetracked. I just wanted to quickly note that because I did change that from last time. Let's do weather rolls. See what kind of weather we're dealing with. It is a bit cool out. So all characters who are not in a camp must succeed on endurance roll every quarter day. But we do have clear skies and gales for wind that make it tougher to camp. Luckily, we won't be doing that. We're spending the day kind of just wandering around wind end. All right, so our two adventurers awaken at the one of the inns. I think there's multiple inns in inns in Wind End. Um, I guess there's not. I guess there's just the uh, boisterous lantern is the main one going on. So that's where uh, we're chilling at, where we stay the night. I mean, I guess we both probably have houses that we could stay at, but uh, we're kind of on the move right now, so we probably just crash at the boisterous lantern. Um, with good old Hala, who, who runs the place. So uh, we wake up first thing. Uh, we're going to quickly consume our rations to make sure we stay uh, healthy and fed and all of that good stuff. So food ration, we're good on. Water ration, we're good on. Other food ration, we're good. And water, we are good. So everybody's fed drank their water up we're good there and that's all well and good so uh first part of the day we were sleeping because it's midnight to six we were sleeping so six o'clock we wake up and like i said i kind of want to spend the day probably and we can kind of maybe even split up but uh we'll probably stay together six to noon just asking around town spending a good amount of time trying to find any information we possibly can about a castle in Ariane arena forest i guess that's how you pronounce it arena forest um and then probably spend the rest of the quarter days probably just doing some like hunting fishing just trying to get a bit of food rations and prepare i don't know if any of these guys i guess neither of them really have fishing poles so either just foraging for food um i know one of them should be a tanner right yeah yeah, yeah. gunolf is a tanner I believe we did some hunting that uh, the donkey we have does have some pelts on it. So maybe I could spend some time crafting those if that's a thing I can do, which I believe. Yeah, I just have to do a crafting roll to turn pelts into leather. So that's maybe something I'll also do today. So let's start out with going around town asking people about possible castles. Uh, so first up, we'll, we're at the inn. We're at the Boisterous Lantern. So we'll waltz on over to the bar where um what's her name Hala is working and ask her because if there's anybody in town that would probably know it's probably Hala the innkeeper you know inns and taverns famously have a lot of gossip a lot of people in common so I feel like Hala especially, Hala especially that she is an older wolfkin she's been around a little bit longer she probably knows a good amount um so we will go up to uh Hala and see what she knows so we go up and ask Hala if she knows of any castles in the area. We probably, you know, chit chat a little bit. I'm sure both Gandalf and Ulrich know of Hala. It's pretty, not a huge town, so they're probably pretty familiar. Uh, and ask Hala if she knows anything about any castles in Arena Forest. Uh, I don't think we need to, like, do a skill check for this. Uh, you know, we're not trying to, like, persuade her or anything, manipulate her. Um, like I said, I think. You know, she knows who we are, we know who she is. She would just tell us if she knew. So the question is for Mythic, does she know of any forests in the area or any castles? But speaking of Mythic, I guess I probably should have adjusted the, the chaos factor. So yesterday uh, was spring 38. We 
journeying through the forest. I don't think much happens, so I'm going to keep the chaos factor the same. I kind of want just the chaos factors just between days. I think it's a little bit easier. Um, but I will roll for a scene alteration. Maybe that'll change what happens. Hopefully not. I kind of want to just proceed normally, and we do. So, okay, so we go down to Hala, eat our food, eat our you know, breakfast, drink our water, go down to Hala. Does she know anything about any castles in the area? Um, I guess the question is, does she know of any castles in the area? I think it's likely. I mean, I think it could be very likely. I, I will go with just... Because castles are probably not too uncommon. This is a big forest. So, like, anywhere in here... I mean, we could see the remnants of one right here, but who knows if that's actually there. That's more in the mountains. We're looking for more kind of in the forest. I mean, that's partially in the forest, but not really. Uh, so, does she know of any... Has she heard of any castles in the forest? She might not know where they are, but does she know of any? Uh, let's see. Okay, good. She does know of a castle. In the... Okay, so let's, let's, let's narrow it down. So she knows something. Uh, is it only a singular castle that she knows about? I would say very likely. There could be multiple, but is it just a single castle? No. So it is multiple castles. Uh, okay, well, let's ask her about the nearest. Well, let me ask her this. So does she know where the castles are? Uh, we'll go likely. At least what part of the forest? Like, one of us has a map. No, she doesn't know where the castles are. Does she at least know the general area? Like, what part of the forest? I would think is very likely, but I guess maybe she doesn't know exactly where. Um, yes, yeah, so she does know the general area. So what we'll maybe do is just roll, I don't know, like a D8 twice. And that could be like north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest. Um, I think that, that works, right? So we could kind of get a general area for where the two castles are. Uh, okay, we'll just say there's two. There might be more, but she just knows of two. Um, let me ask this. Is one... Is one of them... Well, I guess she doesn't know where they are. So this castle... Um, I guess we could just ask her. We'll pull it, pull out the map, kind of put it on the bar. Point to this castle right south of Windend here. And be like, do you know anything about that castle? Uh, we'll go unsure. I don't... Uh, we'll go... Yeah, we'll go unsure. Because who knows if it's actually there anymore. Uh, she might. She might not. She, nope, she doesn't know anything about it. She doesn't know if it's there. She doesn't know if it's gone. Um, interesting. Okay. Well, Hollow's been pretty helpful, so we have an idea of there are two castles. We actually didn't roll for where, so let's figure that out now. Uh, so the first one is at six, so two, four, six. It's somewhere to the south. And the other one is also, they are both to the south. Okay. Um, so I'll just write that in the notes here real fast. Okay, well, that's pretty good info to start. Let me ask her this. Does Hala know of anybody in town that would possibly know more information about the castles? Maybe give us more direct info, maybe knows info on the castle on the map, if it's there or not. Does she know somebody that would know more? I'll go likely. I don't know how likely. It seems probable, but uh, nope, she doesn't know of anybody off the top of her head. That doesn't necessarily mean one doesn't exist. So I thank her for her, her time, and we start wandering a bit more about, around Wind End, uh, trying to just hit up some other people that might know something. Just looking real quick at who might know something. Um, yeah, there's not too many people. Uh, I guess we could just spend some time trying to do, like... We could maybe do like a check, like a lore check as we go around town trying to, to get some info, I guess. Uh, they're both pretty similar on lore, so I'll just add one. I think that's how helping works. You just add a dice, right? Uh, and I'll try to just do a lore check to see if we can maybe find some books, go to like the, you know, the, the, the town office or something. I don't know, probably not that, but like, you know, just ask around town, just do some general searching um and, and try to get some more because we have something to go off of that we know the two castles are probably in the south area so we do get a successful lore check uh does this help determine where the castle do we know where the castles are 
It's kind of cool that there's two castles. Maybe we can each get our own. Okay, so we do know where the castles are. Do we know anything about the contents of them? Uh, I'll go unsure. I don't know if we know anything about what's in them. Uh, we do. Wow, we learn a lot. Uh, where do we learn this from? Is it just like... I'm imagining just like books or texts. So is it from some written source or is this from like a person? Uh, exceptional, no, no. So none of this is written down. Maybe it's like a a word of mouth secret that's kept. So uh, we learned from someone in town. Interesting. Okay. Well, so we know where the castles are and kind of what the gist of each castle is. So we will real quick roll up two different castles and let's see what kind of castles we roll up. So I'm going to use my handy dandy little macro helper. I have kind of hidden below my camera just to generate two random castles. Castle number one and castle number two. So we got Rose Eye and Firewater. One is a medium sized fort, the other a large fortress. Uh, and we got, you know, the standard uh, Forbidden Lands, you know, castle generation. We know type of castle, when it's built, description, condition, original purpose, founder, history, oddity, inhabitants. Is it really empty? All of that good stuff. Um, okay, so I think based on what we know, I mean, it's either there is a medium fort that has goblins potentially in it or a large fortress that potentially has no goblins in it. Um, the, the large fortress is condition worn from what we can tell, uh, from what we were, what information we gathered, condition is ruined at Rose Eye. We probably don't know much about anything else. Like a lot of these details, obviously our characters wouldn't know. So we probably just know kind of the general size, the inhabitants and where it is. Um, so let me just kind of figure out where these castles can go. Um, I mean, it's in the southern part, so I might do some sort of roll. Let me figure out how I want to do this. Okay, so what I did was, uh, since we know it's in the southern area, I just kind of counted out 12 different hexes and then rolled a d12 twice to get some general location. So I was doing something like one, two, three, four, or wait, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is kind of the the numbering scheme I just came up with. And yeah, as you see on the side, I rolled two d12 for the two different castles and placed them accordingly. So we uh, learned from someone in town, and maybe we can kind of figure out quickly who that is, that we learned of uh, a large fortress that seems abandoned and a medium fort that is potentially inhabited by goblins. Uh, so that that's a good amount of info and I honestly think that's enough to kind of go off of and be happy about so we will fast forward time to noon well you know it probably didn't take that long but you know everything's in quarter days so we'll just hop ahead uh, we have two quarter days kind of left we have half the day still ahead of us uh, and I kind of want to prepare for the journey a little bit mainly by stocking up on rations uh, Ganolf here, full on water rations, full on arrow rations, love that. Food rations are pretty good, could be better, and that's probably what we'll focus on. Um, what else? What other gear? So, I forgot that Ulrich is a herbalist, so they're good at uh, foraging. Their food rations could use some work too. So I think Ganolf could go hunt, Ulrich could go forage, and then maybe the last part of the day they could do some like cooking to, to change their stuff into to rations and then also to uh i don't know yeah i don't know just uh just craft some other stuff so let's go ahead and do that real fast here so first off we'll have uh Gnolf go and do some hunting we are hunting in a i believe this is just a forest tile right i i would actually consider this a dark forest tile um, I was going to say not that that matters, but it actually does because of the different terrain bonuses. I mean, it might not actually matter, but we'll see. Um, oh, I guess it doesn't. I think foraging bonuses only come into play. I thought hunting bonuses differ. Yeah, OK, I was right. So there is hunting bonuses based on um, the type of place you're in. So Dark Forest is just a straight hunting roll to do that. So let's go ahead and do a hunting roll. Um, I would assume Master of the Hunt gives me something, but I actually don't remember what it does. So let me double check. Your survival roll is modified by plus one when you hunt during journeys. Great. Okay. That's what I thought. So we'll go ahead and roll that. That's seven dice. There's no way we don't get it. 
and yet we don't. Uh, let's go ahead and push, because, you know, I'm not doing too much today. Uh, and still failed. Wow. Okay. So that means we need to roll on the mishap table for hunting. Um, this is going to be fun, I'm sure. Torn clothes. Your clothes are damaged, your boots break, or your robes rip on thorny plants and sharp rocks. You must roll for the effects of cold. Your clothes be can be mended by making a successful crafting roll. So you must roll for the effects of cold. What does it mean by roll for the effects? Is that like an endurance roll that you have to survive? I kind of forget. Luckily, I could pull this up, go under conditions, cold. What does it mean by roll for roll for the effect? Yeah, you keep rolling endurance. That's kind of what I, you know, makes sense if it's a cold roll. It's an endurance roll. So I guess Gnolf is uh, lost bits and pieces of their clothing. We're going to go push that roll because why not? You know, I don't want to deal with this. Uh, so it seems like we are cold. It is cool out anyway, but I don't really think this matters too much. Uh, good job, Gnolf. Way to just do nothing. Uh, Ulrich, on the other hand, will hopefully be able to forge fine. Uh, I didn't need to double check. I think because it, there it is spring, there is a minus one foraging bonus. Let me double check that. Yes, there is. See, I know some things sometimes. Uh, so we will just get rid of the herbalist modifier. Same thing, right? Uh, there we go. We're actually getting a bit of foraging done. Look at that. We did get a success. So journeys, forage. I think that just means we get one quantity of vegetables. Yes. So we will go ahead and add that to our inventory and hopefully cook that up somewhere. I don't know if we could pay an in to cook that up. I kind of forget how that works. I mean, I know if you have the chef talent, you could cook it up, but neither person does. I also don't know if we got XP after last session. Um, we're supposed to be doing that between kind of, you know, every night is when you're supposed to get that. Didn't happen. That's fine. Um, it's not the end of the world if we didn't. Uh, I'm okay with not having, you know, Missing out on a little XP here and there. Uh, so we did get food, we did forage, hunting didn't go too good. Uh, let me quickly try to make a crafting roll, I guess, to repair my clothing. I'm not very good at crafting, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. Maybe I should have had a... Yeah, no, this is not good. Gnolf's not having a good day. He can't fix his clothes, he's cold, he couldn't hunt. Uh, Ulrich uh, got his berries and he's a happy camper. So hunt and forage and then finally uh so it's six o'clock so we still have another quarter day ahead of us could forage and do more stuff i think i just want to not um like i said i think i just want to maybe do some like crafting so let me double check how do you turn vegetables uh can we turn oh at an inn is that a service that you can do at an inn or is that just oh at an inn if you have a Okay, this is an inn if it's yours. I'm sure I could give like a, a silver to, to have them cook some food for me. That seems fair. So maybe that's what I'll do is uh, just pay the inn a silver to cook this into a thing of rations. I think that's fair. And then that wouldn't take me a quarter day because I'm not doing anything. So uh, maybe as I'm doing that, just go forage again, at least for Ulrich. I think we'll have Gnolf actually do a bit of uh, crafting, like I mentioned, but let's have Ulrich go ahead and forage again. Um, yeah, we'll just not add the herbalist bonus again. Since it is spring, we did get a couple of successes. We got two more. Um, I guess maybe we could have retroactively done that, <laughs> done that roll first to forage and then take all three of our vegetables to the inn. I'm sure they would cook it for like the same price. You know, it's just, I mean, it's just like a pan they put in the oven. It's probably not a lot of work. Uh, even if it is, I'll give him an extra silver. Uh, but then that means I go up two more rations. I'm, I'm actually maxed out on my rations. That's great. Uh, Gnolf then will spend some time turning some, uh, what was it, pelts into leather. You could do this by turning D6 units of pelts into leather. If you had access to tannery, yada, yada, yada. You can also use crafting skill, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so I just have to roll a d6 to see how many pelts I turn into leather. The pelts are on the donkey. I don't think I have that many, so we'll see. Uh, we rolled a three. Do I have three pelts? I have exactly three pelts, so we'll just delete that out and turn that into three leather. And I think with that, we are sitting in a pretty good spot. 
Uh, I guess real fast we'll have, um, who's better at doing crafting rolls? We'll have Ulrich try to repair Gnolf's clothing because it's still ripped from earlier and we need to repair that before. What's going on with this dice? It's like cocked. What was that? I've never seen that on Foundry. Uh, regardless, that's a successful crafting roll and we're chilling. So that's it for the day. Uh, we'll just do forage and craft. And that is it for this day. I know I am already running behind my schedule where I wanted to be, but we're getting there. Um, okay, so XP, I guess we do get that so let's do end of session xp real fast uh we didn't do too much i actually don't know if we'd get any because we didn't do anything so that's kind of sad we didn't travel we didn't discover a new adventure site didn't defeat a monster so nothing happens there i'll quickly create a journal entry for spring rise 40. all right spring rise 40. i don't feel like we need to adjust the chaos factor i think it's pretty chill where it was it yesterday i mean we didn't really do much so i don't feel like it needs adjusted uh, we will do a scene alteration just to see how this first, how the day starts kind of before we leave tavern, leave the tavern, leave the town. Uh, and looks like we're having a PC negative of celebrate in prison. Oh no. Um, I will just choose Gnolf for the player character. Cause like I said, I'm kind of playing Gnolf as uh, like my, my character. And then Ulrich as more of a companion. So, uh, at one point. Yeah, at one point, Gnolf and Ulrich were captured by adventurers pretty recently, like two weeks ago. Um, so Celebrate Prison probably has something to do with that. Let me let me think on that for a minute. Okay, so this may not be like the, the best idea ever, but one, one thing that came to mind is that maybe because they're both staying at the tavern, maybe as they're going down in the morning, having breakfast in the tavern, you know, the main area of it, uh, Gnolf runs into somebody that was one of the other people that were captured along with him and Ulrich and a few others. Uh, and so um, we, we could just maybe get a quick name for this Wolfkin. Uh, give me one second here. All right. So um, this female Wolfkin, Wolfkin named Knuta, uh, walks up to Gnolf and is, is all happy to see him and kind of... You know, the, she's reminiscing about, oh, you know, remember, remember when we were captured? That was crazy, and yada, yada, yada. And Gnolf, like, that was a rough time for him. He, he did not have a good time being captured. Um, I also forgot to rest, so let me click rest for both. Oh, he should be not suffering from cold. I think that's fixed, kind of, sort of, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it, obviously. Um, but yeah, essentially, this Kanuda is like, celebrating them being freed from their imprisonment and Gnolf just is does not want to talk about this right now this was not a pleasant memory it's still a fresh memory and he's kind of just not wanting to like think about it right now and add to no honesty and he's being kind of forced to so uh not like the worst negative in the world and maybe she's a bit of a chatty Kathy so he's like you know, Ulrich and Gnolf are trying to get on the road here, and then she's just chatting it up. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, glad to see you're fine. Oh, that was such a scary time. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and all that stuff. So eventually Gnolf manages to to kind of make his way out of the conversation. Um, and yeah, Gnolf and Ulrich begin journeying away. And look at that. We have absolutely perfect weather for it. We have pleasant temperature. We have no rainfall and no winds. So it's absolutely an ideal day to travel so let's get to traveling shall we uh and travel we shall we're gonna be hiking across i believe this is all just dark forest so it's gonna be kind of slow going um hiking across dark forest it's difficult terrain so we can only hex a, hike one hex per quarter day uh which is, still isn't bad i mean we'll get there by tomorrow or we could force march no we'll probably go yeah one two camp and then the next day we'll be there i don't know maybe we do force march tonight camp no i don't know we'll figure it out we'll figure it out but we need to get moving i need to not dilly dally too much so um yeah we just need to figure out real fast who's keeping watch who's leading the way and then we just got to get going i really need to not dilly dally if i actually want to get to the castle clear the castle you know i probably don't want to do much with the castle today i don't know if we'll have time i'm gonna keep this video a little bit shorter uh but that's you know that's the hope that's the plan that's the dream so who's better at scouting we got three 
and four. So seven total scouting here, uh, not seven over here. So Gnolf will definitely lead the way. Ulrich, hopefully you're good at keeping watch because that's what you're gonna do. So keep watch roll always happens first, is per quarter day. Uh, and gosh dang it, Ulrich, push that roll. We really need you to keep watch. This is kind of important here, guy. Uh, no, he just got major hits to his wits. Love to see that. All right, let's start traveling. Gnolf, lead the way. Okay, at least we got a success there. So even if, you know, that's good enough. Even if something happens, like, that's... Yeah, I'm happy with that. We at least are making progress, right? So let me fast forward time to actually where we should be, which at this point should be around noon as we roll up to, uh, to this square here. So, um... Yeah, I guess we have to quickly roll on the new Dark Forest text. And if there is an encounter, we're not going to be able to, if, you know, have time to react if it's something approaching us. Uh, but this is dark, you know, very dense forest right next to the mountain. But we're pretty much in the heart of the arena forest. So the forest is just dark. It's gloomy. Probably not a whole lot of sunlight, even though it is pretty pleasant out. There's not a lot of like rain or anything, but it is still on the darker side because we're so deep in the forest. We are kind of near the mountains, so you can kind of see off to the side. There is a cave, which maybe we can make that cave our home. But no, we're going to keep walking. We have our sights set on something bigger and better. Uh, we do see a cave to one side, but we do notice uh, through some trees an empty house. I'll just kind of read this as it is. So at a distance, smoke from a chimney can be seen. A small cottage nestled between tall trees on a stand of sticks. Laundry. Oh, hangs to dry. Next to the building, there is a small fenced enclosure, but no animals can be seen. A small field is surrounded by rocks picked from its soil. Green stems stand straight lines to he you hear a ripple from a stream. Um, okay. So, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll read this because I am reading this now, but I mean, obviously my character wouldn't know this. So the adventurers have arrived at a cottage where the family living there recently got attacked and taken as slaves. The cottage is empty. A fire burns. Uh, so fire is still burning. And on the dinner table, there are carters for wool. In the crib lies a doll. A chair has been tipped over. Splash of caudillated blood decorates the wall. The residents nor the kidnappers are anywhere to be seen. The blueprints can be found. A blood footprints can be found in the mud outside the cottage. If the adventurers track the kidnapper, they will find that the local lord needs new slaves for his silver mine. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think, I mean, I, cause I, I won't want to read that regardless. Once again, obviously my characters don't know this. They only know the top part about just seeing a cottage in the distance. I think they have their sights pretty focused on this. They think it's just someone's house from wind end and probably don't think too much of it. Wouldn't really want to go explore it at the moment. Uh, once again, they have their sights set on a castle that's just on the other side of this forest. So they see a small house. They don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, uh, and plus Ulrich's not really even paying attention. So he might have not even seen it in the first place. So go figure. Uh, but we will continue on through the dark forest. Let's do a new dark forest hex roll. It's still super dark and gloomy, even though at this point it's past noon, high noon. Not a whole lot of sun. Uh, we do get a little bit away from more of the mountains and we get, you know, some nice winding rivers and streams. But uh, besides that, no encounters and we are moving right along to 6 p.m. I think at this point, what I kind of want to do, this might be a little risky, is hike another day, don't make camp, sleep outside, and then just hope for the best that we'll be right next to the castle so then We'll be there by noon, can clear it out by six, sleep there, and then finish clearing it out like the next day, something like that. So maybe we do actually want to make camp. Yeah, maybe. It's six o'clock now. Yeah, we should probably make camp. We we could probably get by without it, but it'll just take a second. Like, I mean, it'll take a take six hours, but I mean, it'll just take a second. Uh, So Gnolf and Ulrich also, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, I did forget to do rations at the beginning of the day. Not super important, but let's go ahead and do this while I'm thinking about it now. Uh, okay. That should have dropped the food rations, right? Because I rolled a one. Why is it still a D8? It should be a D6 now. Water rations were fine on. I thought it was on a one or a two, right? Am I crazy? 
There's the food rations, we're good. Water rations, we're good. So just, Gunolf could use some food rations here soon, but besides that, everybody's chilling. Uh, so I guess they'll just both make camp. Uh, I guess we need just one to do it, huh? What role is make camp? I believe it's just a survival role, right? Like it's probably not anything too crazy. It is... Do, 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 do. Survival role modified by quartermaster talent. Survival. Who's the best survival? Uh, wits. So you have four plus two is six currently. And six currently. So either way, it's the same. We'll have, uh, we'll have Gandalf do it. Um, and they will get a bonus dice because of help action from Ulrich as he helps set up camp and set up camp. They do. Uh, I guess there is, I kind of forgot about this table. I haven't been using it as much, but there is like a camp description. Yeah, camp description. We're in a dark forest. So we can kind of get an idea of where we set up camp, which is a huge uprooted tree provides shelter and shade. So look at that. We find a nice place to set up camp get a nice little shelter, build a fire, all that good stuff. And uh, I guess we just kind of get to sleep, really. I mean, there's not much else to it. So what did, what did we do? We slept, we traveled, traveled, set up camp. Was it the first? It was the first travel that we saw cabin. I'll, I'll just jot that down because that's kind of important. Or there was a cabin. Maybe I'll just put there was a cabin since I don't know if we even really saw it. Uh, and then we set up camp, slept, and that's that. Not not much else to this day, but this good. That puts us within a day's travel of the castle, and then hopefully clearing it out is pretty easy. So let's just kind of get going, shall we? Um, nothing else I really need to do. We're just going to rest and rest. Experience. Experience. We do gain one because we did travel through some hexes, so that's... You know, that's something. Uh, and let me create a new journal for Spring Rise 41, where we'll, we will hopefully be arriving at the castle. All right, new day, new me. Uh, let's start out with by getting a weather roll, shall we? Uh, oh, great. So we have hot temperatures making, uh, I don't know, I didn't mean to write that in all caps, hot. Uh, clear skies, love that. So we have plus one to lead the way to lead way, love that. And then wind, uh, it's just a, a breeze, which is great. Uh, but it is hot out, meaning endurance, we have to make an endurance check every quarter day to not get thirsty. Okay, endurance check every quarter day. Which maybe I should've did that when it was cool out the other day. Um, just gonna keep playing though, it's all right. Uh, so start of a new day, let's go ahead and do ration checks first. Eat up, drink up, all that good stuff. Cool, food we're good on. Glad to hear that Gnolf not chewing through the rest of his rations. Uh, Gnolf is good on their stuff. That, I swear, Foundry used to do that where it would drop it automatically, but clearly it's not anymore. Um, I swear it did that at one point. Maybe it's because I have two character sheets open or I don't know what happened. Uh, that's okay. That's a very easy thing to do. So we got our food. Uh, we got our weather. Let's just start going. Let's just start hiking. Let's just get stuff done, please. So, uh, who's better at scouting? I think again, I think it was Godolf by like a mile, right? Because that was a wits. Yeah, he's at seven. He's at five. I guess it's not by a mile, but still, we'll have them lead the way. Them keep watch. Ulrich, do your keep watch check. Bro, can you actually keep watch? You have to do one thing each day. There we go. I don't care if he took a hit for wits. At least he's actually paying attention now. Uh, so let's roll to see how this first leg of the journey goes. We're pushing that. It's only two hexes we're crawling today. No way. Three hits to wits almost kills Gnolf. I mean, we do still travel the hex. We do, but this is not going good. Um, so... First off, we travel to the Hex. We have a new Dark Forest Hex. We also have to roll for a mishap, a, a journey mishap. Um, so let's go ahead and do, or sorry, that would be a lead the way mishap specifically, which is you are caught unaware by thick fog. The distance you cover this quarter day is decreased by one Hex. Oh, so we don't even move at all. 
In difficult terrain, you're stuck in the hex you started. In addition, each suffer each adventure suffers one point of damage to empathy for the gloomy mist. Great. Great. Okay, so we actually don't move. Uh, so we wouldn't do a new hex roll. Um, and I think we all have to do an endurance check to try to not be thirsty because it is hot out. That's a bad endurance roll. Who just rolled that? Gnolf? If we push that, that's maybe going to kill our strength. So I think Gnolf is just thirsty. Uh, is Ulrich thirsty? And I'm going to be honest, I don't remember what thirsty is. So, I mean, obviously, I, 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 I kind of have an idea, but I don't know exactly mechanically how the concept of being thirsty plays out, I guess, is how I should put it. So let me uh, pull open the rules real quick and let's see how thirsty works. So you must drink a ration of water at least once per day after a day without water. You become thirsty. Thirsty has several effects. You cannot recover any attributes except through magic. You suffer one point of damage to both strength and agility every day. As soon as you drink, you are no longer thirsty. So do I instantly lose strength and agility when I become thirsty? Or is that the beginning of every day? Let's say it just happens. So strength, agility goes down for both. They will both also then drink water to, to, to try to not be more thirsty, which we're good for now. So, okay. Bad start to the day. That was you know 6 a.m. to noon. We literally didn't move. Uh, let's try that again. Ulrich is still keeping watch. Gnolf lead the way. Please, let's go. I want to at least make it to the castle. Okay, there we go. So we're moving. We're moving. Uh, a new dark forest hex means forest is still dark and gloomy. <laughs> that's the only nature of location we've rolled so far. I'm sure there's other ones, but that's the only one that's been rolled so far. We're still near the mountains, so we're seeing more caves off to the side. But besides that, not too much else. It is still, even in the dense forest, it is so dang hot. And we have to keep making these endurance rolls. Please. Okay, Gnolf is chilling. Love to see that. Uh, Ulrich, there's no way doesn't get it, right? Oh my god, we're pushing that. You know what? Screw it. Because we're going to get hurt anyway if we get our thirsty. So that's fine. Yeah, we're cool. No one's thirsty anymore. I guess I can uncheck those. Uh, we make it to this hex by 6 p.m. Um, we could try to just camp here and then do that one more day. I guess it's probably the best move. We'll just, you know, I'll try to make this quick. I'm trying to be quicker about all this. Make camp. Uh, who's better wits right now? I feel like your wits got hit, so Ulrich should actually be doing this. Gnolf, go get out of there. Get out of there. Don't make camp. Ulrich makes camp, gets an extra dice from Ul Gnolf helping. And camp has been made. I guess we can real quick just see. Camp description for a dark forest, just to get a little bit of flavor. Uh, we got nature of the camp. There is a long abandoned wooden hut in the forest and the adventurers occupy it. Very cool. Uh, that takes us to midnight that we find the hut, get a nice little safe place to rest, and we rest up, sleep, big honk shoe we do travel through more hexes so that is three xp to the each of us that is enough to level up a talent i will forego that for the moment because i want to make progress and i'm starting to you know i don't have too much more time to record today so um let me close this and uh quickly fill in this journal real fast okay so i actually don't think as much as I want to get more done today, I think I'm going to have to kind of wrap it up here, unfortunately. I know. But we're sitting in a really good position. We have a castle that we know is supposed to be empty. It's maybe not, but we, we don't know that. Well, we know it's right there. We can see it in the distance. It's just we probably actually can't see it. We're in a dense forest, but it's right ahead. So I think the next time we play, we're sitting in a very good position to be right next to a castle. We can get there and clear it out within a day, really, because it's six hours to get there probably a six hours to clear it out. We spend the night there and then the next day we can like clean it out and have an, a stronghold within two in-game days. And that's really exciting. Um, real quick before I hop out, I want to quickly grab a few talents and I already know what kind of talents I want. Um, there are a lot of good ones. We each have three XP, which I believe gets us enough to get some new talents. Uh, we're grabbing a couple of uh, general talents. Specifically, I think Gnolf is gonna grab the chef talent. Well, 
I want one to grab Chef and one to grab Builder, I think, essentially. Uh, maybe Builder's not the most important. And Gnolf has a bow and arrow. I'm surprised also. We haven't had any any encounters yet, combat encounters. I kind of thought that would happen today, but maybe not. Actually, you know what? How about this? I'll think about my talents. And if you have some good suggestions, let me know. I know Pack Rat might be a good one to grab. We got the Donkey, so I'm not worried about capacity. I'm leaning towards grabbing Chef and Builder. Don't know who I'd give to what. Probably give Chef to Ulrich and Builder to Gnolf, but I don't know for sure. I guess maybe I can always think about this a little bit and kind of... Uh, make a decision next time so um yeah that's where i'll wrap it up here today i know we didn't get as much done as i wanted but i think we made some good progress and we are set up really good for the next time we continue with the adventures of Gnolf and ulrich which i am very much looking forward to and should hopefully return to this sometime really soon because i am really enjoying forbidden lands and i really want to get a stronghold set up but we're right there so ah uh, it's frustrating but we're almost there and we'll get to it next time so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video a like would be greatly appreciated and until next time i'll see you